So we want to welcome, among countless awards, we can just introduce them now as Academy Award winners, Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez to the stage. <laughs> Who we will referringly call Bobby now. It's like we've never met. Nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. We're so glad Love you could welcome. We're so glad you could join us on our um, Oprah set today. Thanks, Oprah. But when when you were writing Let It Go, um, and Annie and Katie were obviously such huge in inspirations. What did you feel like at the awards when you finally were like, okay, now we get to thank them? Were they there or were they at home? They were in LA. They were in LA, mm -hmm. but they were at home in LA watching and. Uh, we were just, I mean, the, the truth is that they were the reason we took that project. We probably would have taken it anyway, even if it had not been about two girls that reminded us of our own girls. Mm -hmm. But uh, just because it was Disney and when they ask you to do a princess movie, you say yes. Yes. <laughs> um, but the reason, I remember they, they showed me, I was there for some reason, I was there first and Kristen, they were offering it to me and Kristen, but I was the only one there and I was like, Kristen, this is Kristen's movie. We have to do this, mm -hmm. and uh, and Kristen would have so much to say about growing up as a girl and With owning your power and um, mm -hmm. and and about our and about our experience of raising our two girls whom we love so much. And, and how did it change from the time you guys came on board? Uh, how did the characters change? I've heard some stories about how it started maybe a little differently. Hugely, um, when we came on. And I should, you know, for the record, when we came on, it was a good movie. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't a good musical. Mm -hmm. um, it could have, you could have turned it into, it was kind of this romancing the stone epic adventure. adventure. And that's where like, that's no blizzard, that's my sister. <laughs> that line <laughs> came out of, and, and it worked for that story because Anna was this um, very, very picky, um, anal retentive princess who wanted everything to be perfect and princessy and wanted to marry the perfect prince. And she had this sister who was, who jealous. was jealous and a villain up the mountain uh, um, and, would, and came down and kidnapped her during the wedding, like froze everybody in the town, kidnapped her. Um, then she froze her heart on purpose up like, in the castle. Like, I'm gonna freeze uh, your heart. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it was played by Eartha Kitt, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I think they it had that actually, idea. Eartha Kitt was yeah, yeah, no, it was. No, it was um, Megan Mullally. Megan Mullally, like, like, I'm gonna freeze your heart. <laughs> yeah. um, so, and, and it was fine, but it didn't sing. And we wrote some songs for it, and the songs um, just fell right on the floor. Because, and we had to have this sort of come to Jesus moment where we were like, this is like tuna and chocolate. I, you know, I love chocolate. Two great tastes that don't taste yeah, great together. Don't taste great together. <laughs> we either have to all want to make it a musical, or you could go in this other direction, and we'd be totally fine. We'll stay in New York. We'll write our other musical. You can, like, but if we do want to make this a musical, we all have to really want to make a musical. Because even when you really want to make a musical, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, when we wrote Let It Go, um, we, we went for a walk in the park. And uh, just we, we walk around the park sometimes to get ideas and collect, I, collect things that you can kind of string together like, like beads to turn into a song. Um, you know, you'll throw out a rhyme here or an idea. Bobby, we kind of went up on this mountain and Bobby came Not a mountain, up. like a picnic table. It was table. like a picnic <laughs> table <laughs> on a hill, on a hill. And, and he was like, We remember it differently. <laughs> Bobby got all Elsa-y and was like, snow glows white on the mountain tonight. I was like, oh, you're so manly right now. <laughs> and not a footprint to be seen. A kingdom of isolation. Looks like I'm the queen. Like he, he actually came up with that line after we were talking about, well, what would you feel like if you had to leave everything you ever knew? You had to, you had to let go of the people you loved that you'd sacrificed yourself for for mm -hmm. so many years. And yet you'd have this moment of like, oh my gosh, I don't have to do it anymore. I could be myself. So once we got into that headspace of how complicated that is and how much vulnerability and exhilaration you'd have at the same time, um, we wrote a song from that place. And then writing the song from that place changed how the movie got told. Jennifer Lee heard it. Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck heard it. And we're, they were like, we love this song. We have to rewrite the whole movie. <laughs> Your modesty is probably what I find most endearing about the two of you, that you're just like, oh yeah, we're songwriters. It just happens to have taken off this way. But how does it feel to really have written Let It Go, which is this generation's song? And it's like, fun, that's, how we, that's why we wrote it, because it is that fun song to sing that we like to sing. Uh, and we, wrote, we write songs that we know Katie and Annie will want to sing when we get home. Um, I mean, honestly, for a little while, 
it's vulnerable. Then people started liking it. And then there was like the ABC uh, Good Morning America thing where there were like five different skating groups <laughs> and seven different YouTube stars and a choir. Three different here, keys. And a choir and seven different Same keys. Time. And that that's when my brain broke. That's right. when I was like, this is bigger than us. It doesn't belong to us anymore. But now the most rewarding thing is, um, I might get weepy here, but so we did we did a, a concert at Sloan Kettering or um, at the Ronald McDonald House, mm -hmm. and there are all these really sick kids, and to see that we could come and do a sing along with these kids, sort of hooked up. Oh no, I'm getting I'm like <laughs> they um, were yeah they were in treatment for cancer and they're and all getting chemo chemo like, and radiation at the moment. and then and to have them all kind of get up and jump around and sing and they're jumping up and singing Let It Go and like to know that there's that, that we could, in some small way, give them something to be joyful about and mm -hmm. to keep. That, to me, is the gift that just keeps giving. And I am going to wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, amazing. That's a nice thing. Well, well congratulations on what you got. It's an incredible honor. There are only 12 people who have done it to date. And you've done it in under a decade, mm. which is incredibly, <laughs> Incredibly impressive because even winning one of those awards is a huge honor and people work their whole lives to reach one of those and to win all four. So what was that <laughs> like in the moment after? Um, you know, it's a nice feeling. It's nice. It's always a great feeling to win awards. The, mm -hmm. Of course, that's not why you should be doing it yeah. um, because that's probably if you're trying to win, the guy who coined that term, EGOT, was a was a TV star who made it his goal to win Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony, and he didn't win any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but he had the necklace. Mm -hmm. He had the the EGOT necklace that he wore, and it became kind of a, a story. Um, and so yeah, you don't want to you don't want to get out there with the goal of winning awards because all awards are is a bunch of people voting. Um, and I think part of part of why I was able to win all of those is that it wasn't just me, and I didn't really get a lot of attention. To me personally, I was always part of a team. I wrote Avenue Q with Jeff Marks, and I wrote Book of Mormon with Matt and Trey, and I wrote uh, Frozen with Kristen, so there was never really a story about me. So I think you know people weren't able to say, you know, he's getting a little too big for his britches, let's not give him this one. Right. <laughs> he doesn't yeah. deserve another award. Um, how do you guys work as a team when you're writing musicals together? What is your like process? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it kind of goes like that answer, who's going to answer the question. <laughs> um, you know, we talk a lot, and then we um, sort of get a collection of things. Um, sometimes one of us can run with something for a little while, and then say, hey, what do you think, and let the other one run with something for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it's different for every song, I would say. You know, sometimes we get some music first. That's really rare. Um, Usually it's the lyric first, or at least a bit of the lyric, and then we get some music and catch up and um, let it kind of roll from there. I think if we knew what the you know step by step process was, uh, we would kind of not be able to do it. We you sort of have to. Uh, it's like a you know you just have to follow the road as that's in front of you, um, <clears throat> and uh, I think the key is talking a lot and not um, assuming that either person knows what the other is thinking, that you just have to sort of say everything that's on your mind um, about the scene, about the story, about what the uh, very, there's always a part where we, um, where we listen to other songs because I don't think it's possible to write a good song without knowing all, of the, so all the types of songs um, that, you're, uh, that you're, you know, every song that you write is kind of on the shoulders of other songs, and if it isn't, then it's probably an amateur song that's not going to be any good. So this and this concludes this section of it. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to close the curtain, Ooh. and um, we're going to let you guys get reset up, take a little break, and I'll I'll fill. With